As you will probably well know, the new Percy Jackson reboot has recently launched on Disney Plus with its two episode premiere starring a completely new cast and a new studio with Disney. The main protagonist, the demigod teenager Percy Jackson, is portrayed by Walker Scobell, with the sporting cast including Ariane Simhadri and Leigh Jeffries as Annabeth. Now, early reviews of the new show have been largely positive, with the show debuting with a 96% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics' reviews have been mostly been praising the first season, but of course this show isn't the first attempt to recreate the hugely successful book series by Rick Royden. No, first was a movie in 2010, The Lightning Thief, which adapted the first book in the series and then The Sea of Monsters in two years later, uh, but of course they didn't get the third one because I wonder why. However, that movie did leave lots to desire and is still considered as an undoubtable failure. So naturally, when this series came along, fans were excited and hopeful. Could this be what everyone had been wanting for years? The perfect Percy Jackson remake. Well, for the most part, yes, it's been pretty faithful to the books with Rick Royden being at the helm. Of course, despite the cast being significantly different, the show is ma mainly very faithful. However, the question still remains. Is this the perfect adaptation or an overly subservient reboot? Well, let's get into it. We'll start then right at the beginning and at episode one of the two-part premiere. We have the iconic opening lines from Percy about the Half-Bloods, which I really liked. It shows immediately how this is going to be similar to the books and it's a very solid, solid start using some of the opening lines from the book. And this is good because one of the biggest complaints from the original movie is that they were nothing like the books. In fact, at some points, they just seem like a completely different franchise altogether. So, you know, based off this beginning, the show has hope. Carrying on, we see a full intro introducing Percy and his whole character and why he's the relatable main character who has only the one friend and gets bullied at school every day but he's actually secretly a demigod and is really powerful and all what you don't say i mean it's just a typical teenage coming of age story isn't it if we're being honest anyways moving on yeah this normal thing happens where he gets bullied every day you know getting flushed down the toilet being hit by cheese slices that kind of stuff so percy decides he's had enough of it and decides to retaliate and he retaliates against the bully nancy bobo fit who was also the bully in the books which is again i really like that and he push he's about to push her but she just like goes in she just goes in it, it looks hilarious she just goes flying backwards into the fountain but then of course mrs dodge reveals herself as a monster which is also in the book and tries to attack percy but percy using rip uses riptide to kill her now i really do appreciate that the cgi and effects are really good here with all the stuff that disney is working on you know pixar star wars marvel and all of that stuff a small scale show like percy jackson can easily fall to the wayside and not much effort is put into the actual effects and intricate finer details but it works and it looks really good and i'm really glad that they did pay attention and work on this one now i'm just gonna skip ahead to when percy gets home and sees his stepfather gabe agliano and we see him for the first time now believe it or not i wasn't a big fan of the way gabe is portrayed in this series he's supposed to be an abusive rotten absolutely repulsive guy who spends all his money on gambling and playing games but in this series he's portrayed almost dare i say it as comic relief yeah, this show does have some comedic moments, but a lot of it curiously comes from Gabe, especially in the first two episodes. And I get it, you want this to be more kid-friendly. And showing Gabe how he's acting in the original movie just wouldn't do that for a predominantly kid's show and, and kid's audience. And I don't mind that, even if it is a bit annoying. But yeah, carrying on, Percy and Sally go to their beach house in Montauk, and Sally gives the whole information dump on Greek mythology being real and all of that. Then, of course, Grover shows up in his goat form. But whoa, forget that, because we are back on the road, and Grover is explaining everything at the speed of light. Now, this is the question of it being possibly overly subservient uh, that's where it comes in i mean there's so much going on that you don't have enough time to take any of it in it's info after info and exposition dump after exposition dump we don't have enough time to breathe to take it in and actually comprehend what's going on i feel like the show is immediately presuming that you have read the books or watched the original movies because of which uh, both of which i've done yet yeah, it was still finding hard to keep up the show goes at running speed in fact no it goes at absolutely sports car racing speeds as such the actors are not able to fully deliver properly either you see this especially when grover shows up at their holiday home with his goat legs i mean percy's best and only friend who got him expelled from school earlier in the day just turned up at his holiday home with goat legs instead of the usual human limbs and he literally just has a confused look on his face the whole time and asks only one question. Now, this is a pivotal, pivotal moment in the story. This is the point where Percy is first properly introduced to the different world, the magical world, and it's just completely glossed over because we need to keep the plot moving forward. Now, the reason for this is because they're trying to cram everything in. They're trying to give you all the information in one. I get it, and I get I get what it's done. Once it's out of the way, the story can carry on without issue, introducing us to new ideas, which we'll, whilst we've already got the basics sorted out because of everything we heard in the car and right in the beginning. The thing is, again, because of this, it means that, unfortunately, Walker Scobell isn't able to do his job properly. There's simply just not enough emotion to all this new information. In fact, he either absorbs it all like a sponge, or all of this stuff that Grover is saying is just going through one year... Uh, 
and out of the other. You know, Grover's giving him all of this information. He's just sat there in the car just with a confused look on his face the full time. But yeah, all of these issues are caused because they're trying to fit everything in and to get the facts straight. But moving on, episode one ends with a really cool battle between the Minotaur and Percy, which of course Percy eventually wins despite losing his mother. And again, the CGI here is really good and the setting and seeing Percy use Riptide pretty much for like the first second time was really fun. And of course, you know, all the CGI, it really does help to make this look so much better. Then straight on to episode two, Percy wakes up inside Camp Half-Blood. We are quickly introduced to the camp and we get more info. Before we go on to the possibly more negative aspects of this episode or part of this episode, I just want to say that the camp looks spectacular. Seeing all the campers, Luke, Annabeth and Clarice is all really fun, especially with the new cast. I really like it and it's, it looks amazing. But here's the issue. Percy's mother has just supposedly died. He just found out that one of, he just found out that one of his old teachers at his old school is essential and has half a horse body. He's also just found out that there is a whole other world that he's never encountered before and that his father is a god. And once again, I feel like there just isn't enough emotion, especially for his mother. There is something in the first movie that was, this is something that was in the first movie that was problematic as well. His mother had just been killed by a Greek mythological character and he just sees Camp Halbert and is like, well, I guess we're here now, so who cares? But looking at all the positive things in this episode, because there is a lot, Dion Dionysus, in my opinion, is acted brilliantly by Jason Manzoukas. He was really fun and was a cru cru crucial missing factor from the movies. And additionally, Luke was a really good choice, and I like the way they, portray they portrayed his character. But again, unfortunately, Luke just also becomes the number one source for exposition for like the full time since we meet him. But yeah, then there is this scene in the bathrooms when Percy fights off the Ares members who are trying to stick his head down the toilet apparently and he meets Annabeth who just straight up admits to stalking him I mean weird maybe Annabeth anyways then we have capture the flag which I must say was so much fun to watch there are so many brilliant moments and fights which are really fun especially that fight between Percy and like three Ares members especially when Percy destroys Cl Clarice's spear staff thing whatever it is and that spine tingling scream that you hear from Clarice is brilliant acting and it's really good choreography altogether and of course not a lot of CGI was involved in this fight particularly but the choreography was so brilliant that it was really fun and intense it's really good acting then of course Annabeth is doing that stalking thing again and turns up out of nowhere and just pushes Percy into the water i mean come on surely she could have pushed a bit harder she just pushed him in the water with one hand but i don't know why she didn't just like fully chuck him in if you're gonna do it do it properly annabeth so yeah anyways percy does fall in and we get this absolutely brilliant shot percy has been claimed by his by poseidon his father meaning he's a forbidden child and that trident just looked brilliant skipping ahead though to the end of the episode grover does some more exposition and we end with percy being assigned a quest of course to get the lightning bolt back to zeus and possibly save percy's mother in the process and that's the end of episode two Whew, that was the first time I've honestly been able to breathe it, like in the full first two episodes. So the high points and good things about this show are numerous. It knows what it's doing. It wants to be a faithful adaptation of the books. And this is perhaps where some issues creep in. I feel like especially in the first two episodes, they cross the line slightly and just try to fit absolutely everything in. I mean, the first two episodes are about just 70% just people going gods this and magic that and satyrs this and quests that. You know, there's so much crammed in that there's simply not enough time given for us to breathe. Take it all in and get ready for the next scene or the next, you know, whatever happens next. And yes, there are issues, but I feel like this is a huge improvement on the movies. The cast is better, effects are better, and it's overall just more fun and faithful. I enjoyed it a lot and also I understand that the first two episodes are only supposed to be the base of the cake that will slowly become big, better and better and bigger as we go on. Sorry, that was a terrible metaphor. But yes, that's pretty much it for today's video. And honestly, I hope have hope for the next few episodes for the rest of season one and going on to later seasons as well. This, I feel like it really does have the potential to stay around and complete all of the seasons because apparently there's going to be like a projected five seasons for every book. So yeah, I'm really hopeful and great start. Thanks for watching though. And if you enjoy Percy Jackson, make sure to wait around for more because we'll have reviews for the first season and all of that kind of stuff. And also check out our content uh, channel for content for um, other franchises like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Hunger Games and more. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications for more and make sure to comment what you thought about episode 1 and 2 of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Is it a perfect adaptation or an overly subservient reboot? Make sure to comment down below but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.